Welcome to my channel. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and I've been on a true lifelong martial arts journey, and I adventured around the world, but I was once young like everybody else. I got my first black belt in Taekwondo, and then Daido Juko Kudo in Japan. My third in Hayastan grappling system from Gokar Shevichian and Judo Jean LaBelle, and finally in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, though I'm known more as a catch wrestler. I trained with Legends Dan Severn, Tito Ortiz, Rampage Jackson, Kazuji Sakuraba, even rolled with Joe Rogan two years. Uh, sparred Theodore Machida and Roger Gracie, messed around with Anderson Silva, Fabricio Verdum, rolled with Chael Sonnen, but I worked as an actor and stuntman in shows like Sons of Anarchy, Real Steel, Couples Retreat, NCIS, CSI New York, and The Passage. You can even see me in Cobra Kai and Jumanji. I've lived, trained, and taught in Japan, Thailand, Egypt, and Malaysia. I fought professionally in mixed martial arts and did a bunch of grappling tournaments. I even did pro wrestling in All Japan Pro Wrestling and commentated Pancrase Live on UFC Fight Pass. I work in armed security and I've been through SWAT school. So if you want to learn how to fight like John Wick and shoot like him too, subscribe and get my combatives and street jujitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics. Thanks. Now that you guys know who I am and how I'm qualified to comment on this stuff, everyone's begged me to do it. That's why I'm doing it. Hopefully, I hope that everyone can do better this time uh, because it seemed like I'm just a hater and whatever the first time, but everyone pretty much other than Jeff Chan and a little bit Seth did okay by keeping it simple, stupid, working with his limited skill set. Everyone else did really bad. Clinton did okay keeping it with his skill set too. Everyone else pretty much did horrible tactical decisions, did really bad the first uh, episode. So I'm really hoping that guys can do at least a little bit better this time at different periods. So they got raided on the bus here, and Ramsey Dewey did the best thing that Ramsey Dewey knows how to do, being tall, and when there's a short guy grabbing him and kneeing him in the face. And so Ramsey Dewey did do a good job here by getting a plum clinch, one punch, and some more knees to the head from the clinch. Since like Seth is doing good here with his little uh, mosh pit punches over the top, not very good punches, but at least he was helping his buddies and hitting. I got to give him props for that. Um, and then, boom, he gets hit. And this guy's teeing off on him pretty good. Now, mind you, he's in headgear, and this is why I say there's levels to this game. These guys talk like they know what they're doing, and there's a huge difference between sparring pros, fighting pros, like I did, and like amateur MMA, and then like way below amateur level MMA, which most of them, uh, other than Jeff, are. When you get hit, it changes everything. When you're spirit walking, it changes everything. And this is moderate strikes uh, with headgear on. So keep that in mind. So there's going to be six random attacks here that aren't so, so random. The attackers are going to go at everybody in similar ways anyway. And you're trying to get the point. Supposedly it's only 70% intensity. And uh, here we see Jeff Chan is going to go first. And since they saw it's like, yeah, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> and I've reached out and I have been nice to most of these people in the past. Just FYI. <laughs> I really, really have. Uh, and here we go. So guy comes in on a clinch. Jeff turns him because it's over under. Jeff trying to get space, pushes off, hands up. That's good. One, two, left body kick, reactive double leg takedown. That's good if you know there's one opponent and you don't think someone else is going to come in and be in the back of the head, gets mount, and higher level skills do very good. Jeff gets a point for that. Let's see. The next attack is a shove and a punch. He uses his evasions to evade the two punches and yet a reactive double yet again past the side mount. Uh, very good. And boom. Dominant position, takedown, and gets there. Turns in, gets a kind of double single off the cage, tries to pass, getting tangled on the legs there. Uh, finally postures up to get some ground pound, a little leg drag pass in a side control. Dominant top position, wins again. Way to go. Two-on-one attack here, guys. And uh, getting hit while kind of caught in a rear choke, but facing in. I talked about that in the Rokus video, didn't I? Uh, MMA, second MMA fight breakdown. Uh, we're seeing a little too many left body kicks there, but a good front kick, some punches by Jeff. He's caught in the middle. Finally, he realizes he needs to spin out, get some footwork, and getting some separation. And he does good there. Another point. Ooh, sucking some wind there, but he's the best in shape. Okay, knife to the neck. A grab and a knife to the neck. Simple attack. Shoves it off. 
Boom, manages to parry, gets a baseball bat two on one. Let's go with that. That's bad. Kosoto Gaki outside leg trip, takes him down. Uh, control on the arm, landing some side headbutts. That's good. Controlling the arm, stiff arm. That's good, though he shouldn't have let go of the two on one earlier. And he lets go stupidly here and gets stabbed in the side three times, which is what I mentioned in my breakdown video five months ago talking about this event that Jeff's obviously the highest skilled guy that I respect, but he doesn't really have the self-defense training. And boom, even a sports guy here, professional, a couple fights, professional here, and reactive double again against a stick. Now, again, that could be bad if the guy has multiple weapons or they're fighting over the stick now, and boom, the guy pulls out the screwdriver, box cutter, knife uh, from his pocket or his, and, and his waistband, and he stabs you there. So uh, Jeff's going to the well too many times with his speed and athleticism, with the head evasions and the reactive double, which is something I've talked about before. He relies a little too much on his speed and his head evasions, but a very good job there by Jeff Chan, who I do like and watch some of his videos. And I've emailed with him uh, before. Since I sat years ago, I went on one of his little uh, like call-in shows. Um, so here against a double, Seth kind of does a Uchimata there. Basic skills, knee on belly, knee slide through to mount, keeping it simple, stupid, ground and pound, good posture punches there. Shove and punch gets him twice, three good hits, boom. Using the size there to get the single, he was able to recover, but boy, did he fail there against the shove and punch. Against the shove and punch, the shove, and then boom, you should head an elbow spear into that, which I teach in my combatives and street jujitsu instructional. So the reactive double is not the right answer. It's not. The head and elbow spear is, and a lot of guys are not reacting properly to the shove and punch or the double shove, uh, which I show how to deal with both of those in recent videos. He gets the takedown there and some ground and pound, keeping it simple, stupid, with a limited skill set and using his size advantage, his body weight, uh, Seth's doing pretty good. Getting bad here in a choke from behind, and it's not even a full locked-in choke like all these guys keep claiming. Turns in, which is good, faces in. Uses a size to get kind of a bad single there and there. Uh, his day at the Sambo school seemed to help. He managed to move fairly athletically there. Needed to underhook there and face in, and now he's giving up. Mentally, he is fading. He's getting swarmed on and getting beat up and dominated and shoved in the corner, and boom, mental defeat due to fatigue. As you saw in the first uh, event, I didn't talk about it. He relies too instinctively with a low skill set, where he he's a common like a common guy where he's going to get that adrenal dump and lose his cardio and not do very well. Here he manages to at least stiff arm frame that hand well, one on one. At least stiff arming it's good. Here it looks like he kind of gave up too much control. Could have ended up dead there. A left high kick there and a right punch pretty good. I don't know if those are the same ones or not with the editing. Uh, some left crosses and some left high kicks not bad. So so there, I would call that so so good evasion from the stick swing and a so so entry. At least the timing was okay. The world's worst double arm salto attempt. Thank you, Daniel Cormier. And uh, but he is getting in the top, he's getting the top position, keeping it simple, stupid, and uh, getting top position. Everyone was flopping to the back on the bus. Uh, boy, was I negative in the first one, and honestly, Seth's doing fairly well. And getting some points. Getting some points on the board. Pretty damn fatigued. Was ready to give up, he says. And he wanted to give up a few times. And he did give up in the two-on-one. And that can lead to your death. You cannot give up. Now, Ramsey Dewey. And takedown attempt. Uh, not a very good wizard, but a good kick off the cage by Ramsey. MMA experience. A decently high underhook there for an in a moment. Over under, hook in the head with an Uchimata there. He's not the best at judo, as I've said before. And it looked like that was creative editing there, like he probably failed on that takedown attempt. Back in on the clinch, double overs, bad position. Here, uh, decent sprawl. Yeah, he ends up in top side control and throws mount. So his wrestling and his judo, his underhooking skills, pummeling in, is not fast enough. His reactions are not fast. He's a slow guy. And um, his judo knowledge, he knows the names, but he doesn't know how to step in, create Kazushi, 45 degree angles and everything else. Uh, as I've talked about here, the shove and punch, he just got hit three times and need twice and low kick twice. And uh, finally, he fires back. Look at that. Slow, slow, slow reactions. Yes, his helmet did spin around. Yes, I fought in Daidojuku Kudo World Championships with a space helmet. I have one in the other room. 
And uh, they called that one a loss because, well, quite frankly, got hit like 15 times and didn't do anything back. Not enough aggression uh, to know about self-defense and street fighting. Ramsey Dewey to speak out on other martial arts when he has no self-defense experience other than apparently giving up his money or wallet or phone to a armed robbery at one point. Easy. Did Ramsey just get taken down and squashed? Yes, he did. He got slammed, taken down, out position, crappy leg entanglement, uh, position, finally decides to sit up, manages to sit up, get to mount. There's blue belt jujitsu skills there. Oh, I'm sorry. He says he's a purple belt. Gets to mount in there. So let's, it, it, Ramsey's such a weird guy because he's like kind of intelligent, right? And and well-spoken and he has some skills. He's been doing it for so long, and here he's just getting choked with his head up high and head butted and just giving up. You are not a real fighter. You would not have survived at Militich's or Team Punishment or Blockhouse or Go Goers or any of the hardcore MMA gyms I've been at. And knife to the neck now. And I'm going to give Ramsey some props because what does he do? Collar tie and knife. He starts to fight. That could get him stabbed. So I actually did bad here because you either want to fully comply or fully resist. You don't do halfway active self protection. Uh, and he's right there giving John some props. Uh, either full or not. So once the guy, if he's cracked out of his head, felt a little resistance in the hand fighting there, the guy probably would have stabbed him in the neck. Um, compliance, he does do smart. Compliance used to work. I don't want people watching this now to think compliance is the right answer. Uh, compliance used to be fairly high percentage, and nowadays you often will get stabbed. You need to back away right away if you comply and get out of that knife range. Here against the stick, he is given up, does a horrible sidekick out of range, does a horrible front kick way too late before the guy closes on him. He's fatiguing out, and it shows with bad decisions. Uh, luckily, the guy threw away his own stick uh, while in, he had dominant position against the cage. And uh, slop grappling, takedown there, getting caught in the head there, trying to no hands pass there. Unable the scoreboard didn't look like the group initially guessed it on the first arm. And uh, can't really do anything, um, but they give it to him anyway. So that was so so on the part of uh, Ramsey Dewey. The scoreboard didn't look like the group initially guessed it on the first and now, Rokas Leon Levisius. Yes, Rokas, ready to go. Flopped on his butt on the bus, got beat up and tied a couple times. Uh, let's see what I can do here now. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Clinch attack. He does the arm sag and mounts. Now, that did not look like a very good attempt yet again by his attackers. Almost like. They're going a little easy on him, but he did my arm weight sag attack. Akito going with a Kazushi there that was in my fight like John Wick video. Here he manages to turn the guy, land a hit, and wrist control. That was a Kota Gishi. Making Kota Gishi great again is Dan the Wolfman and eventually Don Wick, John Wick. Since I showed you can really do it in live things, Rokas Leo just did a Kota Gishi outside wrist twist for that takedown that you missed. And against the shove and punch, he did a stupid left leg lead leg round kick that obviously has no power. I talked about that in my second MMA uh, Rokas breakdown video, how bad that is with long distance and no power. And he did it here against a shove and punch and got nailed, but eventually got top position and landed some good, good ground and pound. On the two on one, he's talking about getting the hand control and some chin down. So maybe Rokas is learning. He managed to squirm out and get to the side enough to escape the choke, stand back up to his feet, push away and get distance where he should be running. And instead he's looking at the guys, but at least he broke away and got distance. Another point for Rokas. Good job, Rokas. And especially good job on that Kodigishi. Dan the Wolfman making a keto great again. So much so that John Wick put it in all his, video, his movies. Watch the fight like John Wick, the techniques of John Wick video on uh, Viking Samurai's channel and my channel upcoming this week. Now against the knife against the neck. Either fight all the way, bide your timing for a counter ambush, and then fight all the way with everything you got, or be fully compliant. Don't go halfway. Like I said, this the tension in the arms, especially if someone's cracked out. Uh, they might stab you, shoot you, kill you, uh, etc. But he got away. Guys, uh, when you do... Compliance, though, against a knife, you immediately need to get away and get your hands up in case they decide to stab you. These guys are staying, just trusting the guy not to stab you, and you need to be just making distance. So if they go to stab you, they're just not getting a stab in the heart and then walking away as you die. 
And Rokas manages to get the stick and fight pretty good there. Hey, Rokas, <laughs> good job. Maybe you actually have picked up some stuff on your journey because you look like crap in the first episode. And here you actually maybe you thought about it at night and decided to show some warrior spirit. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he did pretty good. I'm going to give Rokas his props. So I'm so happy that guys are starting to do a little bit better here. Whoa, 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Waki Katami. And I got the knife. Dude, okay, wait, wait. Right. Two on one. Kicks. Elbow and Kodagishi get the knife. There you go. Matt Clinton's up, and he's done fairly well by keeping it simple before. Doesn't look like the most athletic or most muscular guy in the world, but he trained at a reality-based self-defense school here. Um, and then he lands some knees. I think he's in the white helmet. He's wrapped around the head. That's pretty bad. He's pushing off under the chin. That's pretty good. Uh, lands a good knee, but gives up the proper position there. Lands some plumb knees there. Gets busy and aggressive and doing pretty good is Clinton there. And there was a pause in my video, guys, but he manages to get on top and then run away. Good job. That's some self-defense against the shove and punch. He got shoved. He got punched. He got low kicked. And uh, guys, as you see here, everyone's failing in the shove and punch. You need to immediately be ready to head, head an elbow spear into that. And if it's a second double shove, you can arm drag to either a Rimi Nagi or a spin or a rear naked choke. Got shoved, punched, dragged back again. Uh, where are the covers? Where are the spiral blocks? Etc. Guys are not blocking simple, easy to see punches, right? Telegraph punches to the face like you will see in a street attack. Uh, he is mentally fading and giving up and getting dominated and killed, and he taps out and gets claustrophobic from breathing. And as you see there, there's a difference between being a real fighter or not. And he's got a regular dude, got some skills. And uh, now he's been compliant there. He hasn't hand fought. And boom. But see, he stayed in there, and the guy could have just, boom, stuck him in the in the heart or the throat or the face. So as soon as he, the hand should have came up and he should have backed away and gotten some distance right away. Very good evasion, very good timing. He's obviously done this before at the school. He had the best Arimi entering timing on the stick, uh, but he tried to strip the stick the wrong way. He should have twisted left with his elbow tight against his lat, which would have stripped the stick, which you can see me teaching. Uh, and in my random knife and gun defense type videos and random grab defense videos I've been teaching for years, random grab defense. Even talked to Rokas nicely years ago when he was a nice little Aki boy. Uh, Clinton's getting it on top now. Good job. Gotten a side control. And even though he's in the dominant position, he goes up because he's getting claustrophobic and can't breathe instead of just letting the few seconds finish off and doing some elbows and fighting through it. So he should definitely know better because that kind of giving up like Ramsey did earlier and he did against the two on one and he did here can will absolutely get you killed. I have fought multiple attackers and weapons many times and bounced and had all kinds of confrontations my entire life and I'm arm guard, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so you see a little bit of a head tilt takedown there, breaking structure, random grab defense, Dan the Wolfman breaking structure, and the coach there is saying, yeah, look, he wasn't playing by everyone else's rules. Oh, no. Now we got Icy Mike. And against the clinch, we're jockeying around for position. I think Mike's the one getting hit on. Getting beat up. Dropping his head too low as usual. There should have been the chain pull correctly there. He moved quarter turn right and then gave up and doesn't know what he's doing. Getting totally sprawled on. Totally dominated here. Doesn't know how to wrestle. Getting kneed in the face. And uh, for some reason, everything we've seen so far. Oh, nice spinning elbow there, though. Turns in. Mon manages to get dominant uh, corner control because of that. Some good knees, but his head is always low. He's already shorter than half the Asian girls I've banged around the world, and he keeps dropping his head low. Why do you drop your head low? No structure where you can get kneed, uppercutted, guillotined, sprawled on, etc. 
so he has horrible habits. Against another clinch attempt, manages to kind of quarter turn out on it, kind of pike out on the 90 degree angle there, which is actually pretty good. Throws a high knee there that kind of landed. That wasn't bad there. He is gassed already. Shove and punch. Gets hit eight times, and yet he's a self-defense coach. Finally, he's fighting back, which is like sloppy kickboxing. Kempo plus, bo bo Kempo plus boxing gloves does not make you a kickboxing coach. He did land a good counter right hook there that was pretty strong, though. So they do give him a point for that. But he got blasted so many times in the face from the shove and punch. No defense, no cover block even. Uh, that's really bad. And Kempo plus boxing gloves does not make you a friggin' kickboxing coach. Training in Thailand with... Lupinese stadium champions like I've done might get you there. Okay. Uh, he's getting totally destroyed in the two on one. My puppy is stealing my pen that I take notes on that little guy. And uh, Mike's getting totally dominated here. Throwing to the ground. Oh, he got back up and he circled out. Good. Uh, circular footwork there. Nice round kick catch, but unfortunately gets dragged to the ground and stuff like that can happen in multiple attacker fights. That's why kicking, and I started in Taekwondo, but kicking is dangerous, guys. Uh, in street fights, especially uh, multiple opponents, weapons, etc. You gotta be careful. I've done it, but you gotta be careful. You got totally cornered and screwed, stopped moving, mentally gave up, and got his ass beat. So, yeah, I don't know what kind of self-defense coach he thinks he is or if it's just about selling kids' body armor. Gets the knife. Holy crap. Beautiful baseball bat. Passes to Russian two-on-one and does even has some kind of head control and throws a high kick and an uppercut. And even the transfer from the high kick that knocked the knife out of the hand to the uppercut was good athleticism, good power. He did very good there versus the knife. Uh, so, so entry, but heads way too low against the stick there where you get, get guillotined and dominated. Slop jitsu here, some slop wrestling. He is getting the top position, though. Uh, athletically jumps to side control. And uh, his head was too high and he gets rolled over. Oh, my God. Do you not establish good base first and always control before hitting for five seconds? And now he gets dominated in a top crucifix position which you should watch my video on, like a lot of MMA fighters do, and got beat up and mentally gave up there again. So Mike absolutely looked like shit, except for the knife. He, I think he's gone to quite a few different uh, knife classes, maybe even watched some of my best knife defense video on all of YouTube. Uh, and another one I did on combining uh, some stuff Rokas did, um, and he did excellent there against the knife. So everything else looks like shit. He drops his head all the time, and he's already like 5'5". Five, five putting his head in the guillotines, knees, no structure. Without structure, you have no power. You can't control your center. You don't have base. These guys don't even understand the concepts of martial arts. In the next episode, it looks like some more cardio is involved, and uh, they get ran over. Guys, if you want to learn how to fight, you're going to have to get my combatives to treat jiu-jitsu instructional. Um, these guys absolutely sucked at the shove and punch. The shove and punch is one of the most common attacks. It's in the 10, uh, the 15 most common attacks that in, are in my most highly rated on BJJ fanatics or effective self-defense, the most highly rated 28 right now as of filming five star reviews against the shove and punch. It's one of the 15 most common attacks. And uh, so you see some footage of me here against the shove and punch. You did head and elbow spear, get plum clinch, throw a couple knees to the pills, then throw some elbows or a guillotine or a snap down, uh, follow up appropriately and run out of there. Even if there's multiples, you can make a hole to run out of. So um, not a single person who's an MMA coach or a self-defense coach, a kickboxing coach, even knows how to deal with the most common shove and punch attack um so please subscribe to my channel um i'm gonna try to be positive about this and use this as a platform that we can learn from all the many 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 mistakes okay many 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 mistakes i'm gonna do a quick rehash of what people did good and bad. Jeff Chan has good MMA skills, but very poor tactics, poor self-defense tactics, decision-making skills, good, except for his knife. He showed his inexperience, let go of the knife and get stabbed three times. Um, he, as I've talked about before, 
he has too much reliance on speed because it's made him popular on YouTube. Like, you know, if you look like and move like uh, Bruce Lee or a young guy, athletic Asian dude, you can get some followers. That's awesome. But like speed is the first thing to go as you age. And so he's not thinking about it as a martial artist and getting his self-defense skills. I think he's still at the JKD Academy. I don't know. Um, hopefully he'll get some more self-defense skills. Uh, but he relies too much on his speed with head movement, reactive doubles, et cetera. Um, he's always going to the ground. Anytime it was one-on-one, -on -one, he does a reactive double, goes to the ground. Well, that guy can obviously pull a knife out and start stabbing you, okay? His buddy can run out or his mom and kick you in the face and stomp you when you're down, hit you in the back of the head with a bottle. Uh, if you want to learn proper grappling, look at my combative street jujitsu highlight number two, how to grapple an unknown environment where there could be multiple weapons or multiple attackers, weapons pulled, your weapons pulled, uh, etc. You know, I carry every day and my job I carry and I protect people and that's always on my mind, right? Uh, Seth actually did pretty good, except his inexperience shows, his total inexperience shows where he's getting ad adrenaline dumps. It's not in the best shape anyway, uh, big guy, uh, but he's getting adrenal dumps and not knowing how to deal with it. So that is just total, you know, inexperience. Uh, mentally he gave up because of fatigue in the two-on-one, just like a lot of people did. So that's not good. But overall, he's kind of done good by keeping it simple to his limited skill set. So people watching, you can learn from that. Keep it simple, stupid, if you have a limited skill set and get better and get better. Uh, Ramsey, very poor wrestling, poor pummeling, crappy, crappy judo, as I've always said. Everything I've said is backed up here. And I'd like to be friends with uh, Ramsey. I've reached out to him many times. I've called his show and been nice. I've gone on one time with him. I've asked him to do a debate with me. Viking Samurai asked him to go on with me, and he doesn't. He, even because I thought we could have fun and talk about MMA and our you know, going through it so long, me and him and, and some commonalities. But anyways, no clue for no clue at all versus the common shove and punch. He got slammed from a body lock. No wizard was thrown in. No sag. No float like Mifun. Float like Mifun. I was the one putting videos out like that. He has total slop jitsu on the ground. Bad leg entanglement, getting taken down, getting out positioned, getting passed. He gave up, no fighting spirit in the two-on-one. Extend the olive branch again. I'm going to be on Viking Samurai with the, te the techniques being... So uh, check out Viking Samurai and uh, Ramsey. You're more than welcome. Uh, you know, maybe we can make up and stuff, but you're not as good as you think, and you shouldn't bash things as much as you do. So uh, wonderful soothing voice. Rokus. Rokus did the arm whip sag uh, to mount, and he, he did the Kodagishi wrist lock throw in the clinch to a knee ride ground and pound. He got on top all this time. He did a bad lean back front round kick, which I talked about in my Roka second MMA fight breakdown video. That's from his kickboxing training when he wasn't doing MMA training. And you need to get rid of that, Rokas. I often try to help you out, and you don't realize what I really try to do is give you tough love, kid. Um, you got a top position off that Cody Gishi. Awesome. Uh, no, lean back round kick. Eventually got top position, ground and pound. The two on one, he turned and faced in and got out of the choke uh, versus the shove and punch. And um, he got away, but he was like looking to engage instead of running away. Um, and then he did good compliance against the knife and he stepped back pretty good. Uh, he was horribly sloppy versus the stick, but he was in it and fighting. So he showed some fighting spirit and like, you know, kind of made me proud. And uh, I'll get, I'm giving him props now. I bashed him all over in the first episode and I got a feeling he actually thought about all at night, how shitty he did and how compliance he was. And he was just trying to like get to guard open guard and, and survive versus like trying to really do good. And he did a lot better here. Uh, Rokas, uh, we covered and, um, Clinton, Matt Clinton, plumb knees aggressively. That was awesome. Right. Left, right knee. I did that in one of my kudo fights. Uh, head tilt counter versus the body lock breaking structure. I'm guessing his coach has probably watched some of my breaking structure versus random grab defense. Like I've recommended on Rokas's channel, both times he's interviewed me, um, random grab defense. Look at my random grab defense, FSB breaking structure, takedowns, videos, and all that. Um, two on one, uh, Clinton gave up. Giving up is not an option. Everyone say it to yourself right now. Giving up is not an option. Now bow to Sensei Wolfman. Giving up is not an option, Sensei.
Giving up is not an option. I've been in two on one stick attacks. I've been in 10 on one stomping me when I'm down attacks. I have survived those. Giving up is not an option. He did a wonderful, wonderful entry, the best entry, or Remy versus the stick swings. He's obviously trained that at the school before, but he twisted to the right instead of the left with a tight, tight elbow pinch to your ribs and lat. You can strip it there using a quick twist to your body, not power, proper mechanics. Um, so he twisted the wrong way to strip the stick, and then he gave up again when he got dominant position. So there is no giving up. Um, so for like a weak-minded, not athletic dude, he has learned some skills at that school and maybe elsewhere, and that's good, and maybe that will give some of you weenies some hope, uh, but you got to have fighting spirit. And then uh, I see Mike is a troll, and he's duped all these kids, and I really dislike him for duping kids and acting like he knows what he's teaching, and he doesn't know jack shit. And he's a complete and utter fraud and a bad human being because he tricks kids to make money and he doesn't know what he's do doing. He doesn't know what he's teaching. He's playing around with weapons and selling uh, body armor to kids when he didn't even shoot for three years. He's a fraud. Um, and I want to kick his ass. And the only thing he does no good, he's not a kickboxing coach. He did horrible versus Blackie Chan doing wounded leg stance. He does everything bad. He doesn't block punches. Um, he did great in the knife defense. Baseball bat, passed, rushing two-on-one. A little bit of, like, head position was kind of the right idea. Uh, wasn't low enough under the, the chin, but anyway, did really good. And then his high kick happened to hit the knife out of the hand, and his follow-up uppercut was, like, athletic and powerful. Um, so, but that doesn't mean, make you a kickboxing coach. Go train in Thailand for a while, dude, okay? Santi Inouye, Métis Gidepec, these are guys I've trained with. Rafael Cudero. Don't you're not a coach if you learn some kempo and then played around with friends with boxing gloves on that doesn't make you a kickboxing coach doesn't make you an MMA coach and definitely doesn't make you a self defense expert. Uh, anyway, guys, you know who it is. I'm Dan the Wolfman. Hopefully this one was more fun. A lot of the guys did better other than Ramsey and uh, I see Mike. Guys with the biggest channels showing how weakly skilled that they are. Um, but uh, Seth did better. Rokas did way better. Congrats, Rokas. Maybe you could have like a talk and not ask me about Aikido and talk about, you know, my jujitsu, my bouncing, my street experience, uh, MMA and other things. Uh, you know, maybe you guys could invite me to the party a little bit. I'm just not going to toe the line when they do horrible and say, rah, rah, you did so good by falling to your back with your head in the bottom of the bus where you're going to get stomped and killed and stabbed like other channels and other commentary breakdowns do. And I'm not going to say, like I see Mick did a Roka's, oh, great footwork, when he had the worst footwork in his second MMA fight, and he circles the wrong way, and he doesn't know what he's doing, okay? Um, but there's hope for some of you. Subscribe to my channel. Get my combative street jiu-jitsu instruction. It's four and a half hours. It'll really help you out. Uh, stay safe, everybody. And... I'll break down the next one because hopefully you can learn from the both the mistakes and the good that these guys do. If they ever do another one, maybe they'll think about having two low tier, two mid tier, and two high tier guys invite me on, someone else on. And I don't, I'm curious now. Did Rokas just go from a low level guy to showing he's a mid level guy? If Rokas rolled with Ramsey, who would win or would it be basically even? I don't know. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of the comments down below and look forward to the next episode. Take care, everyone. Kaboom.